doing. So we, we look at by actions of T and gamma uh, on X and uh, the category of bad representations G and represent two G given and L varies, etc. And uh, we, we claim to prove that uh, there will be a, a, an initial object. Now I want to remind ourselves our again just just for motivation, I'm about to claim a general claim. But just for motivation, let me uh, remind us that uh, we are actually interested in X being X as we are, gamma and lambda is act here, T, some group acting here. And this T maybe is uh, that group. But also, Maybe uh, it is that group. I can ask about the theory for this group as well. Uh, or I don't know. So this group, etc., etc., etc. And uh, and you should observe that uh, these two groups are unit. Actually, these two groups. Actually, yeah, I'm ready. Uh, one, one, one. Uh, these two communes. And I can. Oh, maybe I'll give you a diagram of six groups. The diagram is not commuting in a sense, yeah. No composition is allowed here. Uh, these two groups do not commute. They actually generate the, uh, the maybe it's easier to see here. They generate that one, which is the center of some isomer group pipe. And also this is an isomer group only conjugate, etc. Um, conjugate by rotation. Uh, every triple is an isomer group. So uh, but the, the fact is that uh, together we generate all that stuff. And it, it is so it is generated by this uh, sequence, the commuting sequence of the uh, non uh, compact group. Each of them could be that T. And everything would make sense. The, the, the only thing that we used, the only property of T that we used so far is its uh, ergodicity or powers of X mod gamma. Which came from from, from non compactness of T in SSD, period. And um, and now also I'm about to focus, I don't know, on, uh, on a pair here. So this would be my T, and this would be my T prime in, in the consideration that I'm about to, uh, to expose. So uh, now assume. Uh, another group, T pi acts on X, commuting. So this T pi, here I am generic, I'm not in that special example, but of course this is what interests me. Uh, so this T prime in the, in the example will act again on the right here. So it will commute with T just by the commutation in SSL, and of course it will commute with gamma because uh, they act on different sides. So it's commuting with the by action of gamma and T. Commuting with the gamma times T action. 
So a priori there is no relation between this T prime and T. But of course in the future it will replace T. They will, they will replace him as a call. What I'm about to uh, expose now um, is actually uh, something that generically is known as uh, you need a lemma category theory. But uh, really it's something very simple. Uh, I'll explain it uh, precisely here. Uh, so I'm adding this x and I'm adding t prime from x to x commute with the gamma times t action. t, t prime is an element in t prime. And gamma times t until forget the, the full group t prime. Just take one element. Just this is a gamma times t vector right now, and and of course I'm adding p zero here and p zero here to g mod h zero, and and this is these are two copies of the maps that uh, I know to exist, of it, giving me uh, initial object, and here I'm adding. What is it that, uh, uh, the theorem here tells me? It tells me a general notion statement that this new representation, for this new representation, there is a unique guy coming from that initial object. Uh, I can call it, I don't know, uh, I will call it. Just a symbol, theta prime of t prime. And it commutes with everything. Well, I guess uh, I will not write this error because uh, it's another L involved. Uh, we don't much care about it right now. But it certainly commutes with the G action. It's commuting with all the structure. It's a morphism. But in particular, it will be the G action. So this means that I can, uh, as an orthomorphism of this variety, I can think of this as something in the normalizer of H0. For every t prime in t, in t prime, so I'm getting this map t prime from uh, theta prime from t prime again. Uh, maybe wait, okay, let me write it like that. And inside here, let me denote by l prime the closure of the image. So what actually do I get? So just by doing this, just reading what uh, having an initial object gives me, uh, we got a representation by action gamma times t prime. Forget now t. Consider x as a gamma times t prime space and uh, and we don't Same space. 
as a map from X, it is the same map. The data is, that is different here, of course, well, first of all, the acting group is that one, and the equivariancy, well, the choice of L is different, it's F prime now, and the choice of that map will be in the same rule, theta prime, and what we claim, so this is equivariant, and this we get for free. Oh, I, I guess I, I, I didn't say the theta prime is a homomorphism. I mean, I did, maybe I did say it. I did mean, prove that one. The theta prime is a homomorphism. Why is it so? By uniqueness. I mean, this, uh, this, if you have two guys, t prime one, t prime two, I draw the diagonal associated with the composed action, etc., etc. Uniqueness tells me that everything should fit, and this should be a homomorphism. You don't uh, do that one. Uh, with L0, there is a picture, but it's not used at all. So, so L0 is not used at all. Maybe uh, an observation, and I'm not sure I'm using it. But let's see, but uh, you can check that both L0 uh, and L prime, by definition, or by construction, in any case, they sit in the same. Uh, uh, and they, as some of that one, they commit. Check this one. It's, uh, for any choice of a zero that we might think. So this is yeah, so we, here, this is a very general uh, setting. I mean, in, my, in our minds, maybe X is SSR, I'm not sure, but what I'm describing is a general phenomenon. Any, for any, and we made choices by, by uh, when we constructed the initial object, but now the, those choices were made. L0 was chosen. And that guy, which to begin was, was just a name. But, 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 but uh, I find surprising, I mean, not, not saying it's wrong, it's just surprising that the theta prime we constructed without referring to the L0. But for the same initial object, for the fixed initial object, you might have different choices yes. of L0. Yes. yes. But they all satisfy that. Yes. So somehow the maximal L0 is, uh, gives the strongest statement. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm not sure what. Uh, once this P0 was chosen, the L0 was uh, forced. On you. But this I asked before. You said so maybe I didn't understand the question. I mean, there, there were choices. I mean, I made many choices. Some of the choices, of course, are correlated. No, when I choose phase zero, let me explain what phase zero is. When I choose phase zero, then uh, phase zero of uh, t for any given t, t x. I can look at this one, and I can look at P0 of X, and there are two elements here, and maybe there is an element uh, of the group of automorphism of G mod H that is uh, at this group, taking that one to this one. Somehow, we, we assume there is, and if there is, there is a unique such guy, and this should be uh, this is forced on you to be uh, theta of t. So the, the unique guy that make this. Uh, okay, so that this situation. Okay, but uh, no, I just asked uh, before the break if you have the initial object. The initial object is unique up to isomorphism in the category. But my question was does this uniqueness, because this category is complicated, does this uniqueness imply that the, that the L? Is that also unique nature, right? Oh, somehow okay. it is. Yes. So yes. my answer to you was, I think I answered the, uh, my answer was correct, but it didn't tell us what you meant. I could, could have taken, and I give you an example, of an, another L that is not in that group. It's not a huge that group. And by yeah. this, is acting on that. So yeah. But this is not, uh, and I, I choose to take, to take the image here. This, this was I a see. choice that I yes. made, and I, I decided to work only with this. Okay. Uh, 
Ah, right. And so if you take a bigger one, then it, it has the same image there. So okay. Yes. I, uh, okay. Okay. Everything is good. Everything is good. So again, just by having a commuting group of whatever kind, with all that, with all the structure of ground times the uh, uh, space, uh, I will get my initial object will be an element in a new category. Sorry, how many are I'll say it. The initial object of the original category that we consider is an element of another category. Category of uh, double times t prime representation of this. With, again, with respect to the same rule. But, uh, okay. Yeah. Let me raise that one. I don't need now we remember what is written here. And uh, from now on, we assume also that the action of T prime on X mod gamma to the N is not going to As well as t. So this is an extra assumption that we observe to exist in our, in the main example that uh, direct sense. And why is this nice? Because this means the category of representation of the biaction of gamma times t prime on X has the same qualities as the previous one. It has the same. It also satisfies the assumption. Uh, that was well needed for the theorem that we just erased, and then uh, the category, I don't want to put the names of it, already, the category of gamma times t prime plus of x as an initial. Should give it another name. But by symmetricity, now I want to claim that it must coincide. This object is not unique, but so the dead here is not uh, the apparent here is more big, so this is, this is a model for my initial object. It's the same. So uh, how do you prove it? Basically by inverting the role of uh, of T and T prime. So uh, In that So we are dealing with two different categories, very similar, but uh, try not to be confused. Yes. So am I right? My 
the, the way you construct the definition, I mean, you, you have a functor somehow from the by representations to the representations by dividing out gamma respectively g. And then, right? Yes. And the way you constructed the initial object, it was like the initial object goes to the initial object under this one. Yes. Okay, so. No. You, you talk about. We use dividing gamma and g gives me a representation of x for okay. gamma as a d prime space, and this is. By this assumption, by this mixing assumption, this has a trivial kind of representation. The initial object is a point. We use that, but this is not what I'm using now. Yes. Okay. This is yeah, something, something that we had used before. Sorry. And we could also divide t and look at the gamma representations, but this as well. This is not well, really what we use. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I could play around with this and see what, what is happening. Um, now I'm, I'm playing a slightly different game. Now I'm using this observation in two ways. Whenever I, so I have two completely symmetric categories. One is the T category for sure. One is the T prime category. So gamma times T after X, gamma times T prime after X. Uh, we each of them satisfy this ergodicity uh, assumption that is needed to justify the existence of an initial object for these categories. We have seen, we, we have just seen, this, uh, we have this green box. The initial object in one category, whenever initial object in that form, in one category, gives an object in the other category. But somehow, minimality, let me express it in words before writing it down, and then I'll see if I need to write down. Take this initial object as we start, take the initial object, what post we did, the gamma times t initial object. Then this gives me the L object of gamma times t prime, which may not be initial. But then there is like a smaller guy, which is the initial, but this should now reversing the wrong, should be an object of gamma times t, which maybe not the initial, so maybe there is a smaller one, which is the initial, but then this new initial of gamma times t is much smaller than the first initial, so all the maps that I'm seeing here should be isomorphisms. And the two initial objects are the same. Now I try to break it up. Is the idea clear? Uh, assume. So then, okay, again, I'm here. G mod H0 was meant to be the initial object of, oh, I'll write it again. Uh, now I'm having V0 to G mod H0 consider as an object, as a gamma times t prime object. And now I'm using the existence of g mod h1. Then, we have this. By initiality, then this exists by initiality in the representation category of gamma times t prime. But this now is the initial object in gamma time uh, g1. So I'm having, I recall, this is the same maps. Oh, no, this is v1. This is v0. Now again, now, Now considering T1, this one, as, so this is the initial object map 
in the gamma times the prime category, and using the just same thing, addressing the roles of the empty prime, considering phi prime one as an object in the representation of gamma times t. we get that much. Am, am I being clear here? H2. Hmm? H2. H2. Yes. Yes, I am. And all these are G-maps between these G cost spaces, G algebraic maps. So, for clue, uh, the color. these are idols. And up to conjugation, NH0 and H1 are the same. So we get that the same space, the same map, the same everything represents the two initial objects, the same object. Okay. I already said that the same map here represents object in two different categories. Not only it represents object in two different categories, both objects are initial objects in their respective categories. Category, I need to add the father, the, the correction of it by L and theta. Fine so far? I'm not sure. Uh, no, it probably is, but somehow we showed that, okay, we showed that if you forget part of the structure, then it's uh, G mod H0. But yes. somehow it seems to me it's not yet complete the proof that the rho times theta prime is really the initial object. For me, it's like if you have the initial but object in this category, then the underlying map from X to the homogeneous space is this. Is okay, um, so, uh, but, so the underlying guy is an initial object? And there is a corresponding uh, L in each category. Different L and corresponding theta, which complete the decoration in order for it to be an actual. This is what they want to achieve. I mean, theta, you can actually check. But you, you can, can check it. Yes. yes. Okay. But what they want you to be convinced of is that the underlying map is the same for them. Yeah. 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 And, and this, this is the important part. And, uh, and now I uh, abandon the general discussion um, and really uh, consider exclusively the, the categories of interest price. So we, are, we have, in fact, six categories of interest. Uh, we have X, which is S, S and R. We have one gamma, once and for all. We have one rho to some guy G, and we have T1 to T6, uh, cyclically ordered uh, unipotent groups commuting with each other, right? And uh, out of nowhere, we get uh, this guy, this serious guy, okay, so now we're right now, consider 
Gamma times T1 for this, uh, for the kind of position listing, uh, pick G mod. So, everything that I'm about to say is correct, but things will collapse in the case that this is just a point, and you, you will actually get nothing eventually. So, let me assume this one, and this I need to, to justify, this is another uh, half the story. But I will just want that one. Uh, but so far, I'm not using it. Out of the general discussion that we had, we get, by the discussion about, Emphasizing is that the underlying map is the same again, and what I was the extra data that I got out of it is the new guy L2, the new map L2, and it serves the same role in the new category and up to six. And I can go on, you can do it inductively, or actually, I can write down six times. All this uh, we get all this L1 up to L6 inside it.
main act and some L act. Or maybe one more name. Uh, so maybe uh, this and let's look at his father and we call it Enbao. So let me pull, pull back things to, to G itself. Just uh, okay. Uh, I know so it's just nice. The original N is also a group. So I have I the original is a library group because I no no the normal life is also a Normal life is also a library group. So this all this natural construction of group theory that you do in a library group theory. Are preserved. So you see clauses. Yes. So all those groups that I'm seeing on the board here are all divided. Now I'm looking at this again. Sorry? Oh, uh, this is. Sorry. Thank you. Yes, eventually. Uh, actually, eventually, this will be done, and H0 will be trivial, this will be done, and that will be done. That's how this is where I'm heading. Uh, but now, N is acting here, oh. and also N bar is acting here, and here, here, L, and here, L bar, right? And let's divide by the action of L. Now, now what I want to show, I want to explain, is that, uh, yeah, that these are all the same. So let's, let's divide by L. So give me a name to this space. Good by the symbols on the wall, on the board. So G act on the left here. The N act here commuting with the G action. So this would be a G space. So this would be a G constant G constant space again. So G mod something. Just read aloud what is the something is something. It's L. To north here. And, and now I want you to see, to think about the way we have done from X to that process space. This map, this V0 had many, many qualities. It commuted with all the, it was a variant to many, many things. In particular, T2, say here, in this, make it explicitly here, was the physio was equivalent with respect to the theta 2 map from T2 to L2. And when I do this map, L2, which is in L, act trivially now. So this map is T2 invariant. By the action on T2 here, by T2 here, expressed as an action by L2 here which is absorbed in that L. So this map, actually, factor through, of course I can divide x by the action of all the t's, t1 up to t6. And I claim that by this, I will get a map from here. By 
by general nonsense is because because this is ti invariant for all i by this Tell me what this is. This is SS3, and this is the this okay. This is the this is SS3, and this is SS3, and I mean X is SS3 by definition, and the group generated by those is SS3, so this is a point. by this assumption, which I have to justify later, H0 is not G. G is simple. And the that one implies what? H0 is simple. And this means that all that level over here is the same as this level over there. All these maps are just trivial maps, trivial identity maps. So there is no meaning for these powers. So uh, n bar is n. L bar is L. And n is n bar. They are all G. All these are the touches. Okay? So, so let me summarize. Situation. Let me ask this if you were. So, the fact that, that the representation Go is unbounded, we never use this. 
No, we never use it, and we will not. We are, uh, 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 until we, we get we'll, of this. Yes. Okay. Yes. So uh, here everything is forward. Once the, the, the story here that uh, story is that all this we are dealing with this category of representations, which a priori might be empty. All those representations might, might be trivial, and this non-triviality is, is a major thing. And this will follow eventually from amenability, and this is another discussion. It's, nowadays it's kind of a trivial, it's not hard discussion because all the material is already familiar, but uh, I will present it later. Uh, but it gives you something out of apparently, uh, appear, appearingly nothing. And now we're just promoting this something to be the full thing, eventually using simplicity. This, uh, okay. So let me describe what, what is it that we got so far. We got a lot. We got that this G mod A is just G. A is trivial. We have gamma times uh, ti, and we get here. This, this, these are this. Maybe I'll write s now. This is actually we act on left and right. We act here on left and right multiplication for this g by uh, g itself and the li's, which generate all of g. This is, uh, this is by the representation rho and by six new representations that we found of the LIs. Somehow, what is that we want? Let me remind you, we will put in superlativity, we want to find a homomorphism from S to G. So, a map which is S equivariant for some representation of S. We add this left side representation for gamma. Now we we build, we build up a lot of representation of big pieces of S that generate all together, and we have a covariancy with respect to these. Somehow we just have now to glue everything together. So we are not there yet, but I think it's clear that uh, we are we are heading there. Constructed this. We constructed this map once and for all. We constructed these groups and those homomorphisms, and we, we observe that this map is a with respect to it. So, again, so now I'm having the gluing uh, uh, and the mission to glue things together, and I, I guess I, I better use it, I better do it after the, after the break. But just I want this picture to be clear in your in your mind. We got so far. I don't understand. Uh, yeah, should, should I continue? Uh, uh, no, no, it's not. 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 Okay. And then there will be uh, yet another uh, yet another argument that the, the natural group will be there. But uh, that's a bit, but that's a <laughs> natural.